insider hacks. Oh no, so I, I like to quote him. He says, the gap between mass production gadgets and the ideal in my mind is so big that my inner perfectionist forced me to do it myself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I let him talk about it. Yeah, so uh, today I'll be sharing a project which actually I made uh, quite a while ago, but somehow forgot to share, so returning the debt. And uh, I'd like to start with uh, the motivation behind it, like what can uh, make, a, you know, make a product which you probably can buy somewhere from, well, for now while it was there and, or Simlim. And um, the thing is that uh, giving yourself a gap between the moment when you realize you need something and the moment you go shopping is dangerous. Because in between, you can start thinking and you can come up with an ideal picture of a device you need. And uh, most likely, when you come to the shop, nothing will really satisfy you. No mass market product will be good enough. And then your inner perfectionist kicks in and just demands that the only way to, make a good, uh, to have a good thing is to make it yourself. <laughs> uh, so, uh, actually the thing I needed was very simple. I just wanted to have some music at my work desk where I mess with all the hardware and everything. Just as simple as this. But there was a big gap. And I started thinking, okay, what do I want? Uh, first of all, you know, apartment sizes are shrinking and every little uh, bit of uh, horizontal space on your table is a precious real estate. You don't want to use it for something like a speaker. You want to use it for some, you know, stuff you are actively messing with. So hence the requirement has to be small, it has to hang on the wall instead. And actually at this point a sizable proportion of mass market products just goes out. Uh, then uh, the next idea was, okay, how many speakers do I need? There are many options available like 0, 2.1, 5.1, 7.1, whatever. But uh, being a sound engineer in the past, as well as that's another bit of my past, I uh, know uh, perfectly that uh, to enjoy the proper even stereo sound, you need to place two speakers uh, in a proper way, preferably in a proper acoustic environment, you need to position yourself in between in a proper way. Otherwise, it's just a waste of everything. It's just double space, double expenses, double trouble, basically. So how many speakers do I need? I need just one. So another big batch of mass production uh, stuff goes out of the window at this point. Uh, then power supply. Uh, external power adapter, I never really liked them. And uh, uh, power sockets are precious commodity as well, but there's uh, lots of uh, uh, computer-related things on the table. So plenty of USB ports, USB chargers, so needed to be USB powered, obviously. Uh, then force requirement come in. Uh, I love to have a big sound. By big, what I mean, you can have the same uh, volume from a small speaker driven up to 100%, maybe past 100%, or from a big speaker driven at maybe 5% of its nominal power, the sound will be much better with a big speaker. So that's what I like. I thought, uh, okay, how can I do that? And the last, but not least, is that uh, I didn't want any volume control on the speaker. Because, first, there are plenty of volume regulators everywhere. Every uh, media player application has a sound regulator. Then there's overall regulator for computer or for mobile. And then adding yet a third one, a physical one, on your speaker, well, it's just too many. And another thing is that uh, variable resistors, especially the cheap ones, they tend to die really soon in tropical climate. <laughs> I, Pretty much wasted quite a few speaker systems here in Singapore before I came up to this idea. So, no choice. Have to do it myself. <laughs> yeah. So, that's the early prototype. As you see, the box is already there and the speaker is already there. So, for the speaker, I decided that the best option is uh, basically a speaker for car sound system. 
coaxial speaker it is reasonably small, reasonably powerful, and not really expensive. So for electronics, uh, pretty simple. It, uh, based on a wonderful low voltage amplifier with balance output. Balance output means that you don't need this uh, big uh, DC blocking capacitor. Actually, uh, this guy over here is uh, not a DC blocking capacitor on the output. It is on the power rail, like same as you have in you know uh, big supercharged cars. It's, 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 it's. <laughs> that, that kind of thing. So uh, uh, I really like this uh, amplifier because it works on anything starting from 1.8 to uh, 5.5, if not 6, unregulated power supply, and it delivers one watt of output easily, and it doesn't need any uh, cooling whatsoever. I mean, I optimized PCB layout a little bit, but there's nothing serious. And uh, a few more little guys here. One is. Uh, for on and off button and indication, because I didn't want a mechanical switch, you know, on off. I wanted push button. So, uh, luckily, there are plenty of options available. And this one is uh, just a little six-pin uh, IC with a button and uh, two outputs, one direct, one inverted, and both are powerful enough to uh, just attach LED straight to it. And uh, the third one, over protection circuit. I'll uh, get back to it later on the next slide. Why do I need it? And for uh, mechanical engineering purposes, uh, I arranged it in two different PCBs. One is electronic itself, and another is all the sockets and everything. Because uh, more often than not, you would like them to be located in slightly different places, and also all, all the uh, sockets they tend to break once in a while. So you just throw away one PCB instead of two, instead of the whole thing. Uh, now, obviously, uh, it uh, didn't come without a fair bit of uh, challenges. The first one I encountered, since I never designed such things before, is that uh, all electronic gadgets uh, these days are just way too smart. Like laptops sensing if there is a headphone plugged in, if you plug in something, but uh, the input impedance of this thing is too high, it doesn't recognize it as a headphone, so no audio signal is going out, so we have to simulate this somehow. And another thing is, uh, since there are uh, basically two cables, one is USB for power, another is the signal cable, and you might think that the signal ground and power ground are the same. Sadly, with complicated computer devices, this is not the case most of the time. So this is just one of the examples of what can happen between signal ground and power ground. You don't want to hear any kind of the stuff. And uh, another thing you need to uh, remember is that uh, all USB ports, they have over current protection. That means whenever you have some really loud music, chances are it will turn it off. So uh, that's why there is this third IC for overcurrent protection and this huge capacitor behind this protection. So it accumulates the power, it basically draws it up to the limit all the time. And this did help. So that's pretty much all for electronics. There's uh, no rocket science at all. All things were taken pretty much directly from the data sheets for all three ICs. Nothing really complicated. Now, mechanical engineering, this is uh, probably the biggest part of fun. The biggest challenge was uh, to find the proper wood material. Proved to be notoriously difficult. Luckily, I discovered this little shop uh, uh, somewhere at the back of Paya Liber. It has to be, uh, it has to have reasonably good acoustic qualities, not too thick, not too, not too thin. So I managed to find some pine, which is not very common material, and made the box, put the speaker in, then little bits and pieces uh, indicator. This thing, again, I had to do it myself because I couldn't find uh, ones big enough in whole Singapore. So I had to buy a brass strip and brass rod, bend it myself, drew it myself. Yeah. 
and uh, after a little bit of messing with the wood <laughs> this is what it was this is a sample sticker on the wall and another little thing is that um, where do you put all the sockets if you put it on the underside it's not very good because they can fall out right on top not very convenient on the side yes but on which one how do you know so uh, I just attach two hangers on top and on the bottom if you want it on the other side just turn this in upside down <laughs> easy <laughs> easy and economical and uh, actually I'm happily using it ever uh, since uh, but still there are two after thoughts like if I will have to do the same thing over again what do I improve uh, first uh, automatic power off if there is no signal for some long period of time uh, the circuit for this it is actually in uh, the data sheet for all the amplifiers so it should be really straightforward and the second thing I would do the top surface slanted the reason is that when it is horizontal it tends to accumulate dust and it tends to accumulate things <laughs> because everybody tends to put something on top right if it is slanted no way <laughs> And th that's, by the way, is the difference between old double-decker buses and uh, new ones. Uh, you know, the uh, front seat on the second floor. <laughs> the old ones, they had a horizontal shelf, so people put stuff there, sometimes forget. The new ones, they have, it is rounded, so no way you can put something there and forget it. just going to fall down straight away. <laughs> I don't know if it was made on purpose or not, but it works. <laughs> And now, uh, show time. So for its size and power supply, it is actually uh, reasonably loud. So it was designed for a, you know, a small room, like study room or something, and I don't want it to be any louder, really. <laughs> Questions? I should think I'm just gonna pass this in around. Look. Apart from the wood, what, how much is the whole <coughs> set of components and speaker? Uh, uh, speaker was uh, something like, uh, I believe, $40 for a pair at Simlim. Uh, all other electronic components probably were like ten dollars uh, from RS online. As you might have noticed, it is uh, mostly SMG other than the big capacitor. And uh, obviously, uh, ordering PCBs was the most expensive part of it. I still have some spares if anybody wants. And uh, I'll be uh, sharing the uh, schematics and uh, PCB layout and uh, mm -hmm. whatever I can share shortly. It's my usual problem is that I always busy doing stuff, never enough time to document it and share and everything, but I promise I'll do. <laughs> so uh, that's it.